What's up guys, you're Bigly here. As promised, I'm gonna take step-by-step -step approach of teaching you all the tools required for fat loss. So today, we are gonna learn the number one important thing for fat loss and it's not calories. Okay, let's jump right in. Whenever we talk about fat loss, everybody talks about this thing called as calorie in calorie out and you have to be on a negative calorie and all those things okay before you know like uh, bashing on to the calories let's understand some basic concept for example if somebody has a skin problem let's say he has a rash or lesions or something like that the first thing that he tries to do is do some immediate fixes or apply let's say some cream or talc so that he feels a little better. If it doesn't subside, then he goes to a doctor and then the doctor gets a few blood tests done and then finds the root cause. It could be, you know, like the liver health or it could be the toxins in the skin that needs to be taken out or some other reason. Okay. Same way. What I'm trying to say is eating more calories is an outcome of a serious problem which is not the root cause of obesity or gaining fat how do i say that for example the hormone ghrelin tells you when to become hungry the hormone peptide yy and cholecystokinin we call it cck determines if you feel satiated and full Immediate burst of energy is governed by your adrenaline hormones and in times of need shutting down the complete metabolism or adapting to the environment, the metabolism is done by your thyroid hormone. So how much you're hungry, how much you're full, when you spend energy and when you shut down is all governed by hormones. And if these hormones are messed up, you know, like, see, people will say that calorie in, calorie out, calorie has to be less in order to, you know, like, burn fat and all those things. But if you don't fix the hunger of a person, he cannot stick to a diet for more than five days and he gives up. So rather than fixing just the outcome, let's try to fix the root cause. We spoke about these four hormones. These four hormones can be majorly affected by one more hormone called as the insulin. Okay, make no mistake about it. May it be insulin or ghrelin or may it be, you know, like cholecystokinin, peptide YY or your thyroid or adrenaline. All these are required in the right amount in our system. When hormone balance is disrupted, that's when we get health related issues such as obesity or diabetes or whatever you name it. Okay, so we need to strike a balance. Let's see how this insulin can affect all these other hormones. In my previous video, I clearly said the experiments that showed that even when people were on calorie deficit and when their insulin levels were high or when they were given exogenous insulin, they gained weight instead of losing when we cut calories. Okay, so let's understand how this works. When somebody is having constant high levels of insulin, uh, he develops something called as insulin resistivity. Let's understand insulin as a transport hormone with a key in it and let's understand the cells, the muscle cells or the liver cells as the destination which needs the key to come and open and deliver glycogen into it. So whenever there is more carbohydrates in your diet, which is low in glycemic, which is high in glycemic index. For example, sugars are high in glycemic index and processed carbs are high in glycemic index, your chips, your noodles and all those things and even at times your chapatis or rotis. How do I say that? Wheat in its natural form is super healthy. We all know it. It's rich in fiber, chromium and da 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 da. 
but when you grind the wheat and make a fine flour by separating all the fibers out so that the rotis become very soft and thin it removes the fiber which keeps the glycemic index in control and the glycemic index of the wheat flour increases when the fiber is removed which means it also becomes partially processed so whatever is more and more processed increases your glycemic index and when the glycemic index is high it increases the insulin production when you eat even rice if you see the polished rice has higher glycemic index than the natural hand pound rice okay so that's why you know like certain options are better than the other okay so now because you're eating junk or sugar or whatever it is the insulin has a spike now people will ask me if protein won't give you a spike or fat won't protein gives you a spike but it is it doesn't give you a spike but releases insulin for the absorption fat very less effect on the insulin but when it is fast absorbing carbohydrates which is high in glycemic index like the sugars they raise the insulin level very high and when somebody is eating multiple meals of high glycemic index he constantly puts in more and more insulin that tries to come and open the cells to deliver the glycogen that is the sugars you know the insulin is always produced new by the pancreas so the key is always intact but because there is too much usage of trying to open the cells the cells get a wear and tear and hence develop resistance the doors do not open completely to receive the glycogen let's say you know like each insulin carries for example two glycogen molecules and when the insulin resistivity is there then you are not able to open and deliver two glycogens we are able to push in only one glycogen so the body gets into a mode like okay i got 20 more glycogen molecules to fill what should i do it produces 20 more insulin okay can you see the cyclic effect because you are constantly developing you know like insulin pushed into the blood the cells develop insulin resistivity which in turn triggers the chain action of producing more and more insulin production in order to push the carbohydrates into the cells so when the insulin resistance gets developed you start producing more and more insulin when there is more and more insulin you have to understand there is fat burning mode and accumulation mode when insulin is active your fat burning hormones cannot function which means you are shutting down the fat loss doorway next when your insulin is constantly getting surged your system is constantly in a flux of you know uh, carbohydrate getting into the muscle your body never feels like it is full it is constantly producing insulin and there is no food in your stomach so automatically your satiety hormone the peptide yy and cck will not function properly or completely because you have a meal for example there is an insulin flux and it is all absorbed in the next two hours but because you have insulin resistivity the blood sugar is high so there is constant production of insulin even after your meal should have been absorbed so for the next few hours there is insulin flux which means your peptide yy and cholecystokinine will not trigger up completely which in turn makes you hungry very often which means your ghrelin gets secreted every now and then can you see the constant influx because you are ingesting too much sugars it triggers the action for example there are a lot of people who drink juices okay or let's say some uh, aerated drinks when you drink it in the next one hour you will feel hungry you just had something but you feel hungry it triggers a chain reaction where your hunger hormone and your fullness hormone are totally missed the next thing is when there is high insulin i said you develop insulin resistivity other than food 
there is one more thing that can create high insulin levels okay in the olden days the adrenaline used to get secreted in the body when you are in danger you know like when some other clan is coming to fight your clan or you see a dangerous animal the adrenaline gets secreted triggers the fight or flight mode where you know like it burns up some muscle and whatever is available in the blood is surged in as energy and it can be utilized immediately by the body to run and save yourself but today people are going under stress not because of physical danger because of what we developmentally the work pressure or the salary pressure or lack of sleep or whatever you name it is secreting a little bit of adrenaline every now and then which is not utilized by us have you seen people say run if you are stressed you use that energy and you are safe but these days people are not doing it which means there is high blood sugar levels that are created whenever you are stressed and in order to combat that there is again insulin secreted which increases your insulin sensitivity and this is also one trigger why a lot of people eat junk food and sugary food when they are stressed because there is insulin surge and again there is a lack of secretion of peptide yy and ghrelin gets secreted and all this chain reaction goes back and forth again and again so you end up eating a lot of food that sits in as fat whenever this insulin is not able to deliver the glycogen into the muscle repeatedly this has to be stored somewhere and it gets stored as subcutaneous fat or you know like visceral fat or some form of fat so this is how you get fat when you are not able to keep your hormones in place from all the conversation that we had so far you could figure out one culprit high glycemic index carbs this could be sugars or your processed food in my last segment i told grandma knows better she asked you to avoid anything that was outside food or sugars and this is what it is i'll tell you one more thing about this hunger thing okay let's say you go in for an all out buffet you're completely full up to the brim till the end of your neck but the moment you see your ice cream or a piece of dessert your mind is ready to take in that we call it the second stomach syndrome you know like uh, we funnily you know like these some of our friends who you know like fill up their stomach and then go for the dessert as if you know there was a second stomach this is practically true sugars make you feel super happy and that's why it is addictive also so even when you are full you know even when this peptide yy and cholecystokinin are kind of making you feel full this you know like teasing of sugars makes you forget it suppress it and are able to eat more which pushes you beyond overeating into super overeating so the main culprit that we understand that can make your insulin always high and can make you insulin resistant it can make you forget that you are full even when you are full and can trigger your hunger hormone every now and then is your sugars and highly processed carbs may it be the breakfast cereals filled with sugar which are advertised as healthy or may it be plain sugar or those aerated drinks or whatever it is these are the main culprits that can ruin the hormone balance and make you never feel full so if you are planning for a fat loss diet the number one thing that you need to do is avoid or minimize to the maximum all these artificial sugar and processed food when you do that you set in an environment that is super good for not accumulating fat when you are on a state of not accumulating fat you can trigger on the fat burning mode easily so guys hope you learned the most important lesson of avoiding processed carbs and sugars in your diet and i hope that you really liked the video if you have not subscribed to my channel already 
go down and click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you get notification of all my new videos that's going to be as informative as this or even better if you like the video give me a like and make sure you comment in the comment section about what you would want to hear about in the next video and most important of all share the goodness with your friends so that they also learn until your next video it's your bigly over and out